I think The Barber of Seville is about the clash of two different generations coming up against each other. It's about the silly old guys who get it all wrong and think they're getting it right. And ultimately, I'm delighted to say they fail. And then it's about the young couple who are full of life and energy and optimism and passion. And they run rings around the old guys. And there they triumph. True love wins the day. It's positive. It's very, um, it's an optimistic story. It makes, it makes me feel positive about life. So that's why I love it, I think. I think it's really funny, but I think it's also got a lot of heart. There's one bit in the opera that I'm very excited about staging because it's the thunderstorm. There's a famous thunderstorm in Barbara Seville where everything stops and we just hear the orchestra for a bit and the orchestra conveys this tempestuous storm. And in the course of it, Figaro and um, uh, Almaviva have to make their way from Figaro's shop all the way into Rosina's apartment. And we're going to do that a little bit. It's going to be a little bit Mission Impossible, a little bit Tom Cruise um, of them climbing up the building and coming around. And to do that on a, a set like we've got at, uh, that Simon's designed, I think could be really good fun um, if the opera singers are up for it, which I'm sure they will be. I think it's going to be really fun stage, and I've never seen it done quite like that. Um, so I, I'm, that's something I'm really intrigued by. Um, I'm also excited about the fact that we've put in um, an entr'acte. The, uh, the, the, the piece act is, is three acts, basically, um, and the third act, after the interval, just starts cold. And I said to Dougie, I really want to give the audience something to bring them back into the world of Rossini. So we found an overture from another opera, uh, written around the same time, a Rossini opera and we put that in and it's the most thrilling bit of music and I just want another moment for the orchestra to show off and to um, it's quite short but I want them to sort of grab the audience and say oh, you've, you've had your dinner you've had your champagne now back into Rossini uh, his land again his world again so that's that's nice because it's never been done before so I feel excited about hearing that in the context of the whole piece I've been wanting to do a Rossini all my life I finally get to do properly his greatest comic opera at a great opera house with such a great team. It's a sort of bit of a dream come true, really. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's really exciting. And I, I just love the music. I can't get, it's like a drug, I think. The more I listen to it, the more I want to listen to it. It's, it's just infectious, the energy and the drive of it. And that, of course, is great for a farce. So I, the, the, the pace of it, the rhythm is just so exciting. Um, so I, I I can't wait to sort of be in a rehearsal room surrounded by all that every day. I think I was very keen with this production to set it very squarely in Seville. Um, I'd never been to Seville, I confess, and so I did a, a little trip, a uh, good excuse to go to Seville, and, and the designer did as well. We were meant to go together, but sadly I got COVID just at the wrong time. So we went separately, but we both uh, loved it, absolutely fell in love with it, and came back inspired by what we'd seen took a million photographs, which have all fed into the design of the show. Um, and so I, I knew the location, I wanted to make it specific, but I also wanted to think carefully about what time it was going to be set. And obviously it was written in the early, uh, early 19th century. Um, I wanted to, it's, it's an opera that's done a lot, and I felt I wanted to give it something uh, that was particular to us and that didn't make the singers feel like they were doing just yet another Barbara of Seville. So, so I thought long and hard, and actually it was the trip to Seville that it all clicked, because I realized that in 1929, there was a very important world fair in Seville, and the whole of the, the whole um, planet seemed to focus on that town at that time. And there's a lot of Art Deco buildings in Seville that were put up at that time, and um, it, it was a sort of annus mirabilis. So I just thought that was a really good time to set it because I think it's a very fashionable piece. It's a world about people who have money and they have a very glamorous lifestyle. And I thought if they were living in Seville in 1929, that would really, that would be their, um, their sort of apotheosis really. And so I just, I, I, I sort of fell in love with that period and it really inspired the designer, Simon, I think. And he's done the most incredible set. It's gonna be, it's gonna feel like you're in Seville at that time um, and so I think it's going to be gorgeous and it's escapist really I wanted it to be something that the audience could just come and have a fabulous night away from all their cares